What's good, my man? Yeah, what's good, How you been? I'm good, bro. How you doing? Good. I'm good, man. All right, get this shit going, man. <laughs> Bro, I feel like everything you touch is gold, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> bro. This shit's fire, though, isn't it? It's crazy, bro. Yeah, it is. Like, ginger beer, mm -hmm. the flavor, the shit, like, how you just, how you just moving with the shit, it's like, which I want to ask you about is, like, I always told you before when we talk, it's like, you do that, like, off-white, like, exclusivity vibe, but you did it with food. How'd you even like get into that? Like, get into that mode? Yeah, like how'd you get there? How'd you like transform it into that? I think like, um, so food has been like a big part of my life. Like, like these, these, are, these are family recipes. Word. Right, so when you're a kid and like, you know, you got 20, 30, 40 people at your house, and people are bringing like crazy amount of Tupperware. Like you start realizing like, yo, I think <clears throat> our food is fire. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah. like, like, this is good to me. But you know, like, everybody said their mama can cook and their grandma can cook. But it's different when like people are like, oh, let me come get a plate. Let me get like, let me bring some Tupperware. So I think what what happened was like I knew our product was good. Yeah. And bro, I've just been an entrepreneur my whole life, and I like I'm inspired by Nike. I'm inspired by Kiff. I'm inspired by like cool shit. And I just feel like there hasn't been a brand yet, food wise, to tap into like the creativity like these fashion brands do. Or like these car brands do, or like even like these phone companies do, like food, like your favorite restaurant is kind of like your favorite restaurant. Yeah. And they kind of stay in that box, rightfully so, because they're just doing so much at your own restaurant. Yeah. You know? but I feel like for me, I've always been into brand and product, and like turning a service into a product. Right. So like that's why I'm conscious on the design and the flow of things, even though I'm not a designer myself. You know, so like as of recently, we started getting to our bag and like and shout out to Seth, like, really finding people who can really take our brand to the next level as I envision it, so yeah. So, you were talking about taking your brand to the next level. I realized, and I always, at first I thought it was just because of the pandemic, which I do want to get into talking about how like the pandemic shaped a lot of people, but um, you're, you're really open. What does the sign say? Yeah, Friday through Sunday, bro. Yeah, That's only three days. Like, my, I, I thought at first it was just because, you know, there's only three of y'all here, and then yeah. I thought it was a pandemic, but I'm over here wondering, like, is this shit intentional? Like, but, like, why? So, bro, I'm a nerd, like, I'm a nerd, right? So, like, when it comes to, like, business, bro, like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> like, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but that's what I am. And I, like, I want to say, like, you know, I'm the greatest operator in the world, but I'm a good operator. I'm good enough to, like, know, like, what to do. And so the pandemic happened, and I realized that, a lot of restaurants were slow and sluggish, slow yeah. to move. Like, you really think about it, restaurants were not selling food online, and it was 2020. It was 2019. Uh -huh. Like, so yeah, think about that. Yeah. So now for a second, we were not selling food online. You had to call to get food. That is right? true. And it was kind of weird to do curbside, and like, I was after we started doing the curbside, like 2015, 2012, right? And that was still kind of like weird. Like, you couldn't put your phone on the menu and see what they had. You had to go in, sit down, and like look at reviews. So, like, if you look at it, like, the restaurant world was still in, like, the 80s in technology. So, when the pandemic happened, I was like, all right, most people are too big. They're moving too slow. They're not recognizing what's happening. And, but we didn't know what was going to happen. So, I was like, yo, let me just, let me do, like, let me do the bare minimal in the sense of, like, hours. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of restaurants wanted to like prove that they're still doing good and like, and stand, like and that's where they're still in the seven days and they didn't have staff and the quality dropped and like it was weird. And so like for me, I was like, yo, I, I had a lot of time to think bro during the pandemic because we were closed for like four months. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about the brand. I started thinking about how a restaurant operates. And, I, and it hit me, bro. I was like, the weekends. That's when most restaurants, bro, their biggest sales are on the weekends. It's thir uh, sometimes Thursday, but it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. You can make bulk of your money. 
So I was like, well, let me just be open when I pay the bulk of my money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because there's no point like for me to like be open when I don't have my background staff. I don't even know if people are gonna pull up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was intentional from that standpoint. And then like we, we just talked about it. Like I love Supreme. I love Kith, and like that exclusivity. And I and I realized that our consumer, bro, like views Jamaican food, like the rice, the, the, the veggies, the plantain, like. For a lot of people that are not from our culture, like that's not everyday food. This is a treat, and we're a little, we're a little bit on the, you know, we're a premium product, so value-wise, it's a little bit more money. And so I'm like, this just makes sense. Like it makes a lot of sense to be on the weekends. It makes a lot of sense to be exclusive. And to be honest, now we're 11 to 8. We used to be only 3 to 8. That is true. Yeah, yeah. You like, you literally had like, and that's what I always liked about what you did was because it was like. It almost felt like how, it, it yeah, like a Jordan drop. It felt yeah. like yo, 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 how you had it open, which I, I wonder too, like now that like the pandemic's all, it's starting to like, knock on wood, yeah. but uh, now the pandemic's starting to slow down and like you see a lot of these people that like are, that were like dying down during the pandemic starting to come back up. And so like, and you were already good during yeah. it. Like, do you think you see yourself either like opening up more at all? No. No? Nope. <laughs> Why not? Why would I? I make more money being open on the weekends. Why? But more than that, bro, <clears throat> like we were kind of talking earlier before we sat down, is like, I'm building product, I'm building brand, like Juice is gonna be in stores soon, sauces, the Ivyverse, like I'm working yeah. on a lot of things. So I need that time. And like if I'm being busy doing kind of mundane tasks, like it's gonna slow us down. So I'm making like executive decision today to like keep it on the weekends and keep that and, make, and go deeper. So for example, <clears throat> I could open every day three to eight or I can just open 11 to eight Friday to Saturday to Sunday. Yeah, like build what you got right here, keep it nice and strong, but then create like what they, like them little champagne towers where like you pour it on the top one. This top one already has, is already full. Like let, not everything trickle down, there, but it's still that same shit. Like exactly. word, okay, bet. And now we're getting like different vibes. Like Fridays, like we have a huge lunch crowd now. Cause they know like shit. Only <laughs> Friday, like the last day work, only time I get out of here really, cause I'm with the fam, I'm gonna be moving around. <clears throat> Let me go get Friday for lunch. We have a crazy dinner crowd. Saturday's a different vibe, and Sunday's a different vibe. And so I just wanna like tweak those things, operate better on those things, really like how can we increase sales, how can we make more money, how can we make more of an impact. So I was like, that's when I get nerdy. You know, that's why I'm sitting in my room. We need that like, though. You know, like yeah. you don't I I I don't care what no one says, man. All the greats, all the greatest people, whether it be some of the, the biggest real hood niggas you know, anybody, they're, they're, they're low key a nerd with their craft. Like yeah. how they study, like how they move, like how they, you gotta be a geek with your craft. I'm not yeah. saying and like the term geek and nerd is looked at so like weird, but like that's not what it is, what we're trying to say. Like we're yeah. saying like you gotta like live and breathe that, yeah, that yeah. way. Passionate. My name is Bert. Um, this I'm the report to your Kitchen. There's Vince, Vince, and then there's me. And I mean, I do a little bit of everything here. I just got done cutting chicken. I'm sure you're gonna see the footage. But uh, yeah, we do a lot from creative to business to making the food to making sure everyone's uh, satisfied when they leave this place. So basically, just a little bit of everything. What's your favorite dish? Uh, my go-to, if I don't want to make nothing, is probably like the goat for the jerk chicken. But I usually go for the fish snapper. That just takes a while to make. Is there an Irish secret menu? They used to be, but then we just made it open. <laughs> but like, if you know, you know. What's like a secret item that you make by yourself like when you're in the kitchen cooking it up? Uh, I just like to mix stuff. So like I'll like mix like let's say curry goat and we used to have these like chickpeas that were red and they were tomato base. Like if you mix the two with some rice, fire. Fire? Fire. It's different. It's just a different flavor that we're just don't order that way, you know. It's just me trying different stuff. I mean you eat the same thing every day or every weekend. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah. I 
think small towns have this like little league mentality, right? So like your parents want to see you play, right? And so they'll they'll pay the coach or they'll like do boosters. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like I think people want like are afraid to leave their city, but also a lot of people care about their city and they want to have it like a big town feel. But like they never left, they never really experienced that, and so like all they know is how to like puff up their chest and like pretend. It's you know. I've they always, don't know. yeah, I've always felt that the small town it always teaches us that like there is only like one. I always learned that like you can only have one it guy. That's what we always been kind of taught. Where like it's like we actually all can win. Yeah. And two, we're so like like shit. How do I want to word this? Like the way that like what you're doing and what I'm doing. <clears throat> It's not like it's it's not consistent. Like we're just taught that we always need to like what's consistent, what is yeah. what delivers, and that's why I think a lot of people just like are nervous to like <clears throat> do that type, do like what they really want to do, is because like yeah, yeah. Shit. I mean, like I think for me it was like early on, bro. Like when I when I think about it, like when I when I was graduating high school, bro. Like when I go back to that moment, and I go back before those moments, like. I knew who I, like what I wanted to do, and like people used to laugh at me, but I was like dead ass, like you know, like I, and I think just because I wasn't initially accepted or initially like had that, like I never felt that I had to pretend to be someone to get people to like me. So you needed that, yeah. Yeah, I just kind of became like, well, if you either don't like me or not like me. There's nothing I can do about that. I understood that really early. I feel like in a small town, people still deal with that. Mm -hmm. So like they want. We all want approval, bro. We all want to be loved. We all want to be respected. We all want a cheerleader. Like, yeah, we all want someone to cheer yeah. us on. And I think the old heads have created this, like, weird energy where it becomes, like, for you to win, I have to lose. And that comes from deep-rooted insecurity. Mm -hmm. Like, Real crabs like, in a barrel. Yeah, like, yeah, so I was like, into that, like, yeah. crabs in a barrel. And so you think about a small town, it's just a small pot. But it's the same amount of crabs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, people that are just in inherently thinking that, it's super competitive. But it's yeah. not. It's just literally all of us, like, it's just water. Yeah, just water. Get, it, get up. It, like, yeah. it just doesn't matter. Like, none of it actually matters. <laughs> I want to get into, you were just talking about the eye reverse and these juices and everything. Yeah. Um, are you hungry? Yeah, I can eat. <laughs> you trying to get some food? Yeah, we eat. Let's get some food first, yeah. bro. Let's get some food, and then we can talk about more about this shit. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Let's get some <laughs> So what are these? Are you? What are these? We try this. This is Jamaica and the Meepop. Jamaica and the Meepop? Because, like, I know it sounds like low-key I might be a little bit of a poser, but I've only had your food, like, twice. You put me on it. You I was, the first person that yeah. ever, ever had me try jerk chicken, and then you had me eating seafood one time. Yep. But, like, I've never actually had Irie Kitchen, but it's weird how I'm, like, yeah. first interview at Irie Kitchen. Like, yeah, so... I'm excited. Yeah, me too. I mean, this is like a Jamaican empanada, right? So like, a lot of countries they all, they have bread, meat, like in a pocket. Some like some countries have samosas. We have patties. Some people have empanadas, right? So it's very like synonymous through a lot of like cultures. So this is our version of like, you know how people have hot pockets here, yeah. right? But this is like a Jamaican version. So like, I had a hot pocket the other day. So we got an island, bro. Like you eat a beef patty, you get a cocoa bread, you get like a ting, and that's like lunch. That's like a vibe. What are some of your, like, I want to get into, like, the dynamic between you, your, your pops, and Bert, but yeah. what are some of your inspirations when it comes to food? Obviously, Jamaica, but, like, how you, how you, do, how you, sh uh, what would they call it? Shape? Not shape. I don't know, like, display your food, or I don't know. Or how we, like, all put it all together? Yeah, how you put it all together. What's some of your inspiration? I mean, pops is the foundation, right? So pops had me cooking when I was, like, six. You got me to understand flavors, you know, understanding how to cook. So my mom, bro, like, food is so big in our house, so, like, my parents were always cooking, always making something. And so, like, eventually you just get, you just gravitate towards it and you start learning how to do it. And so I'll say Pops is, like, the foundation of Iron Kitchen. He taught us all, he, t he gave us all our swag, you know what I'm saying? That's why, he, that's why he's the coolest one, you know what I'm saying? So, but he also, like, makes you, like, inspired to, like, make your own kind of version of things, you know? And, like, he lets you kind of run with it, so... I'll say Pops is like the foundation. I think, you know, Bert, he was who, who's not like a, a family member, right? Like, you know, we brought him like up. He is family. Yeah. Like he is. Like, so like, we, you know, 
you know, he's from Zambia, so he, he's used to flavor. He's from Africa, right? He came when he was 15 years old. So him and Pops have a great relationship of just being foreign black men. And uh, yeah, bro, it's just like cool to see Bert go from somebody who like <clears throat> probably cooked for fun, but like never really like, and now can make, can make things just as good or not better than we can. One last thing before we, before we go uh, start eating. Yeah. I, I want to say this because this is a firm theory I have. It's a cheat code for y'all uh, foreign niggas. Now y'all, when y'all come to America. There is like any <laughs> nigga that comes here and like really be on their shit. It's yeah. a cheat code being like, 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 I don't know if I'm right though. But, like, the I'm cheat, bro. Cool. The cheat code when you're foreign, bro, is that you see America for what it is. A yeah, lick. Like like, a lick. Yeah. That's what America is. You don't have those opportunities everywhere else, bro. A lot of people, when you're from America, you just, you're in that dogma. You're in that kind of like. You're already conditioned. Yeah, they condition you to think that you have less. They condition you to think that the odds are against you. They have condition. And like, when you start believing that for yourself, you've already stopped doing the work to move forward. Us, we're like, nah, bro, there's people literally trying to stop you with guns or like, like laws that don't allow you to, right? Here is like, it's mental. So we look at America like, man, I can, just, like, I can open a business as my first year. You can not be a citizen and open a business in America. America is capitalism, right? Open a business. Yeah. Play the game. Yeah. You know? But, that's, but we're afforded that because we don't come from this society or this ecosystem naturally. You know? Right. You ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fatties are crazy. Yeah, bro. Beef patty. Shit crazy. What's that first thought? You got the crumbs uh huh. We got the paper bag. The paper crumbs. Bag. It's like a 40. <coughs> yup. This shit's crazy, man. Right? Yo, what the fuck? I can't swear too much. I ain't trying to get, uh, Mm -hmm. Bro, what's it? So you got this beef? What else? Yeah. Beef. Yeah, this is a beef pattern. We got chicken ones, we got yeah, veggie ones, we make a lot of ones, but. But it's like anything else in it, but beef. Maybe we got beef, we got onions, but it's all like cooked down. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I, I ain't tasting the onions. Like. And then the dough, the dough got the layers on it, so it's like flaky. This is crazy. Mm hmm. Is this like an actual Jamaican dish? Well, actual Jamaican dish. Really? Yeah. What's like the one dishes y'all got that like you put a Jamaican spin on it? That you can't put a Jamaican spin on? No, that you did. Like it was, it was not even like a Jamaican food, but like you put like a spin on it. I think I think our chicken sandwich and things like that that we make. I have never had it. And what? I've always wanted a chicken sandwich. Bro. Bro, chicken sandwiches are essential to the world. If our kitchen wasn't tore down, they could do doing cleanup. I would make you a chicken sandwich. You live in the city, just pull up on the weekends, bro. 11 to 8, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's your fire. Whip. <laughs> a little Irish hack, a little secret. On Sundays, we're on Uber Eats. We're on Uber Eats? On Sundays. Word. Okay, so. I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but like, growing up, I want to get a little bit deep while like we you know we eat and pause. Yeah. But, what was Vince? Vince's like childhood, like, and the ups and downs and like struggles during growing up. Like being I don't know, but I feel like I'm still going through those up and downs, bro. I think a lot of it, right, is like you you figuring out yourself. Yeah. In different stages of your life, you know, like what you want to become and what you, like seeing your dreams come true. I think I'm constantly battling like aspiration and reality, you know. I always wondered because. You were, what, like 26 right 27? 25, 20, 26, yeah. Yeah. I'm in the beginning stages of 20s, and I'm starting to really realize that, like, a lot of the issues I go through are really just all being 20. I was just talking to my home girl the other day. Yep. I was like, you might think you really got a lot of issues, but it's just your mind's really just like what you just said. You find yourself out. You're figuring yourself out. Yeah, you're just figuring yourself out, bro. What's, like, advice you can give me on how to move throughout your early 20s? Or even just the people listening. Well, watching. you're, like, 22? 22, yeah, I just turned 22, a couple, like, a couple. Take times. more risks. Take more risks, work really hard. Like, just be risky. Any idea you have, no matter how crazy it is, just attempt to do it. <clears throat> There's no point to wait, because before you know it, you're going to be 30, 32, 33, 34. And if any aspiration to have a family, that's just going to take away from, that's just going to take away from your dreams. 
So you're like, as a, I feel like as a young person, being as young as possible, like you're 18, 19, 20, 22, shaving 25, bro. Like, I'm still taking big risks all the time. So, as you can see right now, I just asked you for advice. Mm -hmm. You're one of the people I always come to for advice. Yeah. Even as of recently when we got on the phone again, yeah. I started talking to you, like, I haven't spoke to you in a minute. Like, we used to talk all the time. Yeah. Who's the people that you go to advice, go to advice for? Because I know, like, you're not going to call me when I'm trying to figure this shit out. Like, I mean, bro, like, <clears throat> you're levels, right? You have people who are above you, who are just ahead of, who are ahead in age, <clears throat> wisdom or success. You have people at the same level as you, and you have people, like, who are below you. Below you. I feel like I learn from everybody. Mm -hmm. I get certain feedback. Like, even right now, like, me seeing your reaction to a beef patty is giving me insight about how a beef patty can, like, be part of, like, probably, like, a young person's, like, part of Grand Rapids, like, culture. You know, like, how can I insert that? But I feel like my dad's a big one. I feel like <clears throat> my friend Ryan is a huge one. Um, there's a lot of people that I respect, bro, and I'm always down to learn and, and listen, for sure. And that's why, I, like, when I do it and give people advice or I give people my suggestions, it's because I, I do listen to people who are a little bit ahead of me, you know? When are the juices coming in to uh, being on, on the stairs and shit, on the floor? On the floors? Uh, two months. About two months or so, you know, we'll probably be in markets, we'll probably be in stores. I've been killing this all in mm -hmm. the whole time. The whole time is killing it. Probably like a year. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll just keep scaling that. You kind of just wait. You just wait, like, kind of like, like, wait until it's right. Like, because what you're sitting on, it's already good. Like, it's good. Yeah. Like, whenever it comes out, it's going to be set. Well, a lot of it is just, like, making sure, like, the things is lined up right, you know, and, like, you're right, like, just being patient. Cause like once once everything's lined up, I go. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure as much of the things I can think about ahead of time is figured out. And then once that's done, we're just going. And again, I kind of I know I keep I I just I, I just asked for some advice earlier, but you just said something that really went. Uh, I it's like related. I kind of related to what you were just saying, but like the confusion about it, why I had it was because you just said you waiting for it to like line up. Mm -hmm. Every entrepreneur, besides like the kids that are like you know silver spoon, yeah, that are like you, like your parents can take care of it all. You got all the yeah. connections. It seems like in this business, it's really hard to start off because you need to like sacrifice so much and you got to give in so much. Yeah. What advice can you have? What what, what advice can you give on how to like handle that? Because I mean, I was just talking to my boy, and like we're trying to like do a drop, and like he's like like. $5,000, how can I handle that? Like, how can I pay that? I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. No, I feel it. <clears throat> I mean, you, really, I mean you, put, you start putting money into something, just make sure you, that it's what you want to do. Yeah. Right? And it's, I think go fast and just go, and like, you know, $5,000 at 20, 22 is a lot of money, but when you're like 25, it's not that much. When you're 30, it's not. Right? It, it, all, it all changes, right? Um, yeah, I mean, like, so your question is like, what? Like, how should you feel about, like, the risk side yeah, of it? The risk side of it. And if you truly want it to happen, bro, like, I feel it's risky you're not doing it. It's risky you're not doing it. Because you're always going to have, like, man, I never did that. And I always wanted to. Like, I, don't think you, I don't think you want to live your life like that. I think you want to live your life, hey, man, like, I did this, and I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it is what it is. You were wrong. But, like, all you want to do, like, yo, I was right about that. And it's changed my life. All right, last thing I want to ask is, um, I know, the car is getting kind of crazy. Where do you see Irie at in the next two to five years? Before we end this all off, where you see it at, let's kind of put that, let's manifest that. Where you see that in the next two to five years? Uh, the I reverse. You're going to see a lot of off, like, shoot brands that we're creating under the Irie brand. And you're going to start, I'm in a different position now, so you're going to start seeing me testing and trying, like, you know, what does a product look like, you know? What does, you know, what does a clothing brand look like? What does, you know, a music thing look like? Like, that's what you're going to see from me. I reverse is me attempting to build and try new things. So you're gonna take it. You're gonna take it where it's like it was just a restaurant, but now it's like a brand. Yeah. Uh, That's gonna be crazy. Yeah. I want. I want it to be everywhere. I want it to mean something in culture, bro. I really do. So I have big aspirations. It's gonna happen, bro. Yeah, I, I believe so. We are gonna run it up. We are gonna run it up. Run it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, love you, bro. I'm walking off. Let's get it cracking. Chap lips and bad backs. I've been in my bag like rap snacks and backpacks. I'm not selling EBT, but I do got.
got that stamp. Yelling my lyrics at the show just like a champ. Yo, man's is always on Tinder. He gonna need some ramps. The only thing that's fire about We had a great time. Zipper on your pants. You can't get parked like a ramp. I shop on I just got in the car, had that loud ass alarm. MLB fitted on, but I did not cap. No, nigga, we're not gonna rob nothing. I'm head and hit the toe tap. I'm that nigga in this bitch, period. No tap. Lit like a lamp. Niggas really, really working. Yeah, black people always die in those movies too, so you gotta be, you know. I think that's a little bit right, bro. Niggas do not die like that. Niggas do yeah, not die like that. It's crazy. It's always safe in the white girl. Yeah, I, I, is that a sign? Yeah, I think that's a deep-rooted sign, bro.